Hi guys, welcome back to Snakes and Adders. Today we're doing the introducing series. It's episode 43 and we're looking at this guy, the awesome Florida King Snake, Lampropeltis getula floridana. Again, if one is to believe the most recently published of the scientific papers, this actually doesn't exist anymore. This species has been synonymized with the Eastern Chain King, along with the Apala Chicola King Snake, Lampropeltis getula means eye. This is an Eastern Chain King, Lampropeltis getula getula, which has now become a species, Lampropeltis getula, and these guys have all been rolled into it. <sighs> Such fun. The hobby doesn't recognize this and still sells. Apala Chicola Kings, Chain Kings, Florida Kings and Brooks Kings. And for the likelihood, for the foreseeable future, they will continue to do so as well. So while science is doing one thing, the hobby will do another. And this is why we will continue to use defunct triominal names to more easily differentiate between species, subspecies for the beginners and novices. Plus the majority of the text that you find online will refer to them in this manner anyway. By essentially making, uh, making uh, in this case, three subspecies synonymous with one another, we may well lose defined standards of how we expect each subspecies to look. Yes, they naturally integrate, but Floridas have a network of regular saddles that are approximately the same length as they are wide, uh, and the centers or roots of these scales over time begin to lighten and diffuse, and this only becomes present later in life. Uh, Eastern chains, on the other hand, have a saddle that's approximately twice the length that it is wide, so far less regular than the one, two, three, four, five, six saddles that we've got in the same space we might get three on an eastern chain. They also don't develop the light of flecking as they get older uh, if we go for standardized classic looking uh, getula, the chain kings. Um, so they differentiate for themselves that way. The Apollo Chicola king snakes are incredibly variable with a series of blotches or stripes and lots of red and yellow pigmentation. Uh, and they're kind of all over the place. You can get some that look up, you know, really far out there pattern wise. Um, so also there is the uh, South Florida king snake or what was previously known as the South Florida king snake or Brooks king snake, Lampropeltis getula brooksii, which have also been rolled in with getula and they hail from a small area in South Florida. Brooks essentially were high contrast Floridas for a lack of better way of describing them with a greater amount of diffusion and more yellow in that diffusion. So the saddles on a fully mature brooksii could be incredibly hard to spot. Florida king snakes uh, are available in a range of cultivars, including hypomelanistic, amelanistic, anathristic snow, peanut butter. There's all sorts now, but like so many more. They're a hardy, personable snake that can become heavy set, as we see here, quite chunky, as adults and generally carry more mass than, say, a California king snake, Lampropeltis californiae, if in the latest paper, or if how we're going to do it, Lampropeltis getula californiae. Adult size is around four and a half to five and a half feet in length. In nature, they're encountered in a range of habitats, including wooded areas, wetlands, farmland, and disused, disused human areas. Brumation takes places in crevices, burrows, logs, and any other serviceable cover. This isn't a species that naturally brumates deeply, and we'll go through that with the climate data slightly later on. So more than likely, they just seek shelter for relatively short periods by comparison to some of the other species that we've studied in this series. Um, Florida king snakes have been a mainstay of the pet trade as far back as I can remember. And one of my earliest experiences was holding my friend Simon Allen's little Florida king snake in around 1992. He was a lovely red snake and really began my love affair uh, with this species. And that was a Florida king snake as well. Stunning thing he was. Really, really personable. I loved that snake. They're relatively easy to provide for and hail from many regions associated with corn snakes, Pantherophis gattatus. So there are many parallels to their care. Adult vivarium should be around 48 inches long and a hotspot should run at around 30 degrees Celsius during the day and drop off to around 24 degrees Celsius at night. Heat can be provided by most means, heat pad, spot bulb, ceramic or deep heat projector. A thermostat is essential, it's not optional, you must use a thermostat um, and we can control to the degree the temperature that hotspot is. 
nowadays the cognitive benefits of UVB radiation um, above and beyond vitamin D3 synthesis which is used mainly for lizards is being extolled by many keepers um, and they're wanting to sort of advance their reptile husbandry uh, if you wanted to use UVB with a snake we're not against that and you could use the T5 mini T5 kit from Arcadia, the Shade Dweller unit, which I believe provides a UV index of one at around 30 centimeters away from the bulb. At this point, we are still fluid with snakes and UVB. If you want to do it, it's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. A wide variety of substrates can be used, including beech, uh, aspen, hemp, lignocell, orchid bark if allowed to dry, or one of the particulate soil, sand and grit mixes available on the market. A warm hide and a cold hide should be provided for security. Moss boxes are optional and most homes in the UK will see Florida king snakes shed without issue. If you do have issue or bits of shed skin that stick, then we can maybe use a moss box temporarily when the snake's going through a shed cycle. The sexes with king snakes generally are identical. There's no sexual dimorphism. Males and females are the same size. When you're predominantly a snake eater in the wild, it doesn't do to have a sexual partner that's half your size. More than likely, the males would just get eaten for dinner rather than mated with. So, you know, this is kind of why we tend to match them pretty accurately for size. And if you're going to breed them, make sure you've got snakes that are of equal size. Um, sexual maturity generally takes three to four years, although there are records of animals producing viable eggs from a much younger age. But we would not recommend this. Breeding occurs in spring after a gentle brumation, by most of the US snake standards anyways. In fact, some keepers don't even bother, they just pair them and they breed and lay viable eggs. 12 to 25 eggs are laid and subsequently in incubated at 60, for 60 days at 28 degrees Celsius in a mix of substrate which is usually 4 parts vermiculite to 1 part water and that seems to do just fine. Baby Florida king snakes can be nervous wriggle bums and may even be a little bit standoffish, rearing up into a defence posture to tell you how big and scary they are. Um, and also, when they're little, they can be quite weak bowed and you, they may wee on you each time you handle the snake. Don't worry, this period will pass relatively quickly once it realises that you mean no harm. They are usually ready feeders and grow quickly. As they grow, they can become very food orientated and their territoriality may increase. Once removed from the enclosure, this usually abates pretty quickly. And this may be a species that benefits from being fed from another enclosure to try and disassociate the vivarium with food. As, because this snake is such a foodie, as you can imagine, obesity is a very poss very real possibility and it should be avoided. It's a heavy set snake anyway, carrying a fair bit of mass. Um, and because of their foodie attitude, a lot of keepers use them as dustbins, which unfortunately makes them even bigger and more rotund. So, you know, I'd maybe avoid that. This was first described by Blanchard in 1919 as Lampropeltis getula floridana and this essentially remained the same throughout its taxonomic history until 2014 when Wallach syn syn synonymized, synonymized it with the Chain Kings and then that was confirmed by Gaia I believe in 2018. This hobby still sells Florida Kings as floridana so please don't knowingly cross Getula and Floridana. If you buy a chain, it will be described as Getula Getula. And if you describe a Florida, if you buy a Florida, it will be described as Floridana. If you buy a Brooksy, it will be described as um, Getula Brooksy. So just keep them separate. Keep them in their lane and let's not try to blur them. Yes, in nature, there is intergrade regions. But if we breed for standardized type, we will keep the classic looks of each of the separate subspecies for future generations of keepers to enjoy. So, climate data. Now this might seem odd or a bit too in depth, but realistically, even though you're beginner keepers, we want you to go through the climate data. We want you to study where the animals are from, maybe look at what they're gonna be going through in the wild, and yes, we're going to do this as we do for the intermediate and advanced series as well. But there's no reason why novice keepers shouldn't at least appraise themselves of the climate data of the country of origin of the snake. So to that end, we need to look at distribution. And we looked at, uh, we took a copy of Ronald Markle's King Snakes and Milk Snakes, which shows the distribution using a key of the subspecies. Now, what's been proposed so that you understand it is Lampropeltis getula getula or Getulus getulus in this 
uh, before it got reclassified, they, they made the usses as, for some reason. Uh, Francis will explain. It's something about male and female. I, I never quite got understood what was going on. So the stripe bars here, all the way down this eastern coast, this is Getula. And from the most part of Florida, actually, they have a wider distribution in Florida here than Floridana does. Floridana occurs down on the southwestern coastline and there's a small blip just here so what we decided to do was we took five separate locations these were spring hill lakeland port charlotte naples and homestead so these run through the natural range in the southern portion of the range for floridana and we had a look at your daytime high and nighttime low took the averages of the five different locations Peak summer uh, temperatures are around 33 degrees Celsius uh, with cool temperatures in winter of between 23 and 25. So, you know, that's only a, like a, 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 a data spread of about 8 Celsius. It's not as wide as we potentially would see with other species. And nighttime lows, equally, we're getting up towards that sort of almost equatorial nighttime high of 24 celsius which a lot of the animals in Papa enjoy and that's for a period of the year throughout the summer from sort of june until late september then it does really start to drop off though but not as deep as a lot of the other species that we've looked at and if we think about things that are really extreme like the russian rat snakes that we've studied in the past they really drop off these guys are only dropping off to around 12 or 13 celsius in their coolest month for when so actually their brumation may only be for as little as sort of four to eight weeks and even then they may at 24 degrees during the day they could still come out and have sporadic activity plenty warm enough for them to maybe even hunt still and then just go and make sure that they hunker down nice and neat so you know some animals maybe this this under sorry not some animals this goes some way to explain potentially why breeders find that they get breeding success without uh, major brumations, particularly brumations that we potentially have to look at for Niger, which is the Eastern Black, uh, Holbrookie, which is the Speckled, uh, and you know maybe some of the northern portions of Splendida and certainly some of the northern portions of Getula. Remember, Getula now has rolled in Means Eye, which occurs here, which is in the panhandle of Florida, this bit that I've chopped off behind here. That's uh, the Apollo Chicola King, this guy. And Getulus runs right up through Connecticut, New York, the works, Maryland, everything. So um, far wider spread, far more successful. And Getula are known to be the record holders of the kings, or that is the nominate form of the king. I think it's 208.3 centimetres is the record. Florida kings get nowhere near that size. You'd be lucky to get one past five feet in length. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. We, as always, are, are devoted to uh, providing as much information as we can, trying to educate and bring on novices, which is why this channel was conceived in the first place, and help you realise that there is far more to the reptile hobby than royal pythons and corn snakes. And such as this awesome dude who has behaved himself all the way through this video. What a glorious snake. Absolutely gorgeous. These, these are an example of species that were widespread and kept in massive numbers back in the day. They're starting to enjoy a bit of a resurgence given their um, genetic power, but that's a shame. You know, like if we're just keeping stuff because we can make cool colours out of it and we're not actually considering the fact that this snake is breathtakingly beautiful, intricate, personable, hardy, tame, super, super great appetite. Look at you, just amazing, aren't you? God, I'm in love with him. Amazing. We'll keep coming with the videos. We started 2020 the way we mean to carry on. But we'll make sure that we keep coming with the educational guides and stuff. We'll see you all again soon. From Chaz and Paul at Snakes and Adders. All the best. Cheers, guys.